Dreamers, it's the 8th Insomniac here, and today I'm bringing you my week 3 GBA match against Gearheart Postcomed uh, for a number of reasons. Um, I've been really, really busy this week uh, with work, um, and I've also been really sick. I've had a wisdom tooth infection, uh, essentially, um, which is why this wasn't postcomed, because uh, I've been in a lot of pain and stuff like that, so. Uh, we, because of all these reasons and stuff, uh, we had this battle pretty late, in fact we only had it last night, so we had it literally on the deadline, on like Saturday night, which was, um, which was crazy, so. I had to get up super early, uh, my time, like 6am, um, because, because of time zones and things, but, um, I was already kind of at a disadvantage, but, like, as I got into the game, like, Sleep didn't matter to me, so it didn't affect me too much, but at this point I'm rambling. But anyway, we should probably get into team preview. Um, so preparing for Gearheart's uh, squad, um, there was a few things that absolutely terrified me, one of which being Banded Victini. Because um, that thing, if played correctly, um, just completely wrecks my team, as does um, Setup Clefable. I was very, very wary of Setup Clefable and I really wanted to bring Vaporeon, but I just couldn't because then I wouldn't have anything effective to deal with Megalopony. Um, even defensive Vaporeon can't take um, two Adamant Hydron Kicks, um, especially if it's the Power Up Punch Megalopony set, which was what I was most afra afraid of. Um, so I had a lot of preparing to do, and we <laughs> I did it very last minute because of my lack of time. Um, but I did put a lot of thought into each mod. So first of all we have uh, set up Sword Stance, uh, Infinite with Gunk Shot. Um, which just absolutely destroys his team once Tentacle is gone. Um, I can literally sweep with a combination of, well, barring not Scarf Victini, I will be able to sweep with Infinity but plus two. Because um, it's a very spooky uh, life orb. Um, the set is Gunk Shot, obviously for Fable, uh, Flare Blitz, and then Muck Punch for Megalop. Um, next up we have Offensive T-Spiking Roserade, um, because other than Tentacle, he doesn't really have any other forms of hazard removal, if I remember off the top of my head. Um, and obviously Tentacle sucks him up because it's a grounded poison type. Um, my thought is, if this Confable is set up, it's not... Um, it's either going to be unaware or magic guard. And if it's unaware, that means um, Infinite won't be able to Oko it after an S. Maybe it'll be able to Oko it. Um, what am I trying to say here? Um, if it's unaware, it won't be Magic Guard, basically. Um, which is kind of obvious, but... What am I trying to say? <laughs> I don't even know, but... My plan was to find out what kind of Clefairy this was. Clefable. This was um, as early on in the match as possible, so I wanted to get Hazards up ASAP. Um, that was my game plan, determine what kind of Clefable this was, and if it was Magic Guard, it was set up. Um, which is what I was trying to say there, holy crap. <laughs> um, so I wanted to determine whether it was set up for Fable or just regular defensive unaware standard .jpg. Um, so my set on Roserade is Toxic Spikes, Ect Sensory, Hidden Power Fighting to hit the Crocodile um, in hind and, and Lop, but in hindsight it should have been Hidden Power Ground because it also hits Tentacle fairly decently too. Um, and then we have a Sludge Bomb, obviously, to deal with Club Able. Next up we have Physically Defensive Flodges with a Rocky Helmet um, to stop Megalopony's Fake Out Spam and gives me a semi-decent switch into uh, Crocodile, bearing it being Banded, of course. Uh, Banded Earthquake is a very scary thing for my team, but I have an immunity. One that's not very reliable because it is weak to its other dual stab. Um, but we'll get to that later. We have Physically Defensive Flodges with Moonblast, uh, Psychic, Synthesis, Arim Therapy. Not too much speed investment. Um, I was gonna creep Tentacle, but in reality it just really wasn't worth it. Um, just for the simple fact that Psychic really wasn't gonna be doing too much if it was a specially defensive variant, so. 
Uh, next up we have Scissor. This is a choice banded variant because it completely wrecks his team. Um, no, there are no switches to a banded Scissor on his team, barring a physically defensive tentacle. And even that doesn't really appreciate, you know, taking a U-turn. Um, or taking a super power or a knockoff. So, um, my set is Bullet Punch, obviously the late game. Uh, U-turn for initiative and then knockoff and super power for coverage. Uh, maybe I can catch Victini on a ballsy switch. Um, God knows why he'd do that, but you know, <laughs> it's there. And obviously superpower to hit the Registeel, something I was very, very afraid of. It is a huge defensive threat to my team because it uh, it's a very good answer, a uh, very good check to Forges, um, <clears throat> which I needed to remain healthy for Crocodile and block me, so. Next up we have Scarf's Latias um, with Psychic. Psy Shock, rather, Draco Meteor, Healing Wish, and Trick to catch something in on the switching like Clefable or Registeel. Those are his designated switchings for Latias. Um, as far as I can tell in the squad, anyway. And then we have physically defensive Reggie Rock with Counter uh, to catch Victini if it has a uh, Brick Break. Um, also for U turns as well. Uh, if it's banded, U turn will still do. Like. 40 damage, something like that. Um, maybe I'm overestimating. overestimating maybe. Um, I'm rambling at this point. Uh, Thunder Wave for speed and control, stealth rocks, and then box life for general stab. But anyway, that's enough of the team. Um, I'm going to lead off with Infinite because I really think he's going to leave with his uh, one of his stealth rockers, which, by the way, he has three potential uh, rockers. Um, but he ends up leading off of Megalopony, which is fair enough because, you know, the faster you can Mega Revolve the better. Uh, but I do switch out here, not wanting to take any, any unnecessary fake, uh, fake out damage. I'm not sashed either. Um, I am life orb, so. Um, so he's going to go for the fake out and immediately I can tell that that is Adam and Lopony, which is a very scary thought. So I wrote that down immediately and I was like, crap. <laughs> so he's going to switch out, not wanting to take a move last and go straight into uh, Rick Steel. But I do do predict this and go into my scissor, wanting to take this out as early as I can and I really want to pressure him. Um, and this early on, I don't want to make any overpictions. I want to kill this. I do go for the safe superpower and it's going to connect with the tentacle and do so much damage. Um, that's going to take a decent 30% off, considering it's resisted and long stab, that's pretty nice. I switch out here, fearing Scald or HP Fire, so I go into a safe medal, which is Latias. And here is where I see that I am lefties and not indeed uh, Scuff, which is where my uh, my Jimmy's are rustled. Um, and I was thrown off a bit by that. Um, again, I don't want to overpredict, I want to kill this tentacle because it's only way of getting hazards and toxic spikes so the sooner I can kill that the better honestly um, which means Gearheart is now free to set up his stealth rocks and they are there to stay for the entirety of the game because I didn't bring any hazard removal this game um, in hindsight that was a little bit silly but at the same time not really because my team isn't really hindered by rocks uh, thanks to me and my draft plans um, but here I'm gonna stay in and go for my own stealth rocks because uh, I want to whittle this team down, that is essentially my game plan, because this team is very, very fat. Um, so we go for the lock on here, and I'm thinking, shit, what the hell is this going to go for? I'm thinking the uh, the dynamic punch is coming, and I'm just going to switch out to Forges, um, which I will resist, but he actually turns out to have Zap Cannon, uh, which is interesting, and I'm going to get, he's actually going to hit it regardless of me switching out and negating the lock on effect, which is kind of kind of upsetting but not really um, and I do predict the Clefable to come in here on this on this um, forges um, maybe he was fearing a calm mind behind his forges um, so he's obviously going to withdraw his Clefable as I go for the U-turn keeping the pressure on uh, keeping the pressure very much on Gearheart so uh, it's still 6-6 six -six at this point and his team is slowly, slowly getting whittled down, which is exactly what I needed. I come into Razor Raid here, wanting to kill this thing and set up my T-Spikes as soon as possible, because honestly, um, if that Clefable is unaware and not Magic Guard, I just win with hazards. Um, and, and this is where I realise that Registeel is a huge problem. 
because uh, it stops it stops my remainder from doing so. It can't set up two spikes until this is whittled down. Um, I think I stay in here and go in for the hidden power of uh, fighting just to gauge what kind of red field this is, and it's definitely specially defensive. Um, and he's actually going to connect with a zap cannon, which really, 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 really rustled my jimmies because it's such a low accuracy move, and he's hit two of those now. And at this point, I was getting a little panicky because now he can outspeed my Roserade with a number of things, um, one being Clefable, um, and I was worried about Psychic or Flamethrower. And here I actually go for the Sludge Bomb, predicting a switch out, um, and I get fully paralyzed, which is really, really unfortunate. Um, that would have had so much damage on the knee, but there's nothing I could have done, and he's going to go for the use down here, clawing back some initiative. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't stay in with Rosary there. I just couldn't. I had to go into into Red Rock because I needed Rosary. I absolutely needed it. So he's gonna go into Cable here. And at this point, I realise this is not a uh, Magic Guard. So as soon as they can kill that Tentacle, the better. Um, I actually end up switching out here into Infinite, expecting the Flamethrower. Um, also, Moonblast wouldn't have done too much because I do have slight HP investment. And I am also able to throw us out with a gunk shot, which I do end up going for. And here is the moment he sacks his tentacle, and here's the moment where the match um, uh, starts to pick up a little bit. So tentacle is down, and I'm getting really excited because I'm just like, right, I need to heal well with forges, get up um, top spikes, and just get registered to a point where I can kill it with something. Here I stay in and go for Mark Punch because I calped it and it did kill, but he seemed to have some kind of defensive investment and he goes for the knockoff, doesn't kill, uh, predicting the Latty has to come in here. Um, it was a very, very 50 50 play there. Um, and he's going to withdraw first, which uh, tells me he is scuffed. Um, so I put that in the back of my mind as he went into the community there, predicting the knockoff match punch, match punch, which was a nice prediction on his behalf. However, I do go into Forges. And he actually withdraws here. Um, not sure why. He probably could have killed me with a uh, Zen Headbutt or a V Create. Maybe he anticipated my switch into Red Rock, which is fair enough. Um, not bothering to want to take U turn, like click U turn, because you know, <laughs> just I'd get the damage back with Lefties. Um, so he's going to summon Wish here, which tells me it's, it doesn't have Soft Word, obviously, um, which is handy. Um, and at this point, I do think this is just standard cleric color fable with uh, Moon Blast and Fire Blast or Flamethrower. He did reveal Flamethrower early on. So there's a Moon Blast, and this does quite a considerable chunk to Reggie Rock, more than I am comfortable with. Um, and I'm just trying to get some chip damage. I can't switch into Scissor, I just can't. Um, revealing Flamethrower, I just cannot risk it. Um, if he makes the right predicament at the right time, I lose when I win, win conditions, and that is no okay. So he's going to set a wish as I'm desperately trying to get damage in this thing, and I don't want to thunder wave it, um, simply because I need to get this toxic if I want to wear this down. <clears throat> so he's just setting up wishes there, and at this point I'm thinking he's either going to go into Registeel or his Crocodile, so I make the offensive play, I think, into Scissor here. Um, because I know a Scarfed Earthquake will not kill Scissor in a million years, um, considering I have full HP investment and I resist the Earthquake. No, it's neutral, rather. Um, <laughs> I'm talking out of my butt right now. So he's going to withdraw and I want to take a bullet, face, bullet punch to the face. And he goes into Clefable, which was so questionable. Um, I really, really questioned this play. I was like, what? what? I was really thrown off by that. Um, you just don't switch in a Clefable to a Scissor, hello. <laughs> but I go for the U-turn here. Because um, it would have killed the... Uh, would have killed the... Crook, regardless. And this gives me a chance to get my soldiers back up to relatively good health. And also to Aromatherapy, which means... Uh, which means Roserade is no longer paralysed and can do things and stuff and will no longer be outsped. Uh, which is really, really freaking nice. Um, he's obviously going to go for flamethrowers here, not wanting me to get free switch to Scissor, which is respectable. Because um, Scissor is obviously a huge threat to this thing. Um, 
so right now it's just a bit of a soul fest um, trying to kind of gauge uh, what movie's going to go for or what switch is going to happen when so I think I pull a switch here as I actually end up going for Moonblast, my bad um, I go for Moonblast here, get the special attack drop and I believe next turn is when I pull the switch into Rosarade because uh, he's either going into he's either staying in or he's going into Registeel uh, both of which are perfect for me because I can set up two spikes on this uh, and I can set up two spikes on the on the Registeel but he ends up going up into his Victini which obviously I am hugely threatened by as I am not choice scarfed and this thing naturally outspeeds me so I'm not going to be staying in here because I don't want to be taking a V3 or as a then headbutt to the face. So once again I'm forced out into Red Rock, making the safest play I can, um, slowly whistling down his team to Stealth Rocks. Um, that Zen headbutt is doing next to no damage. Um, and it tells me he's not banded, um, which is nice. I'm thinking he's a sort best. I'm thinking maybe some kind of Shuckerberry, Culberberry variant. Um, I'm going to pull a double hit again into Scyther. Um, I know he's not going to recreate against the Red Rock because that's just silly. Um, if he did stay in there, he was going for U-turn. So he does end up going to his Ready Steel here, and I make a 50-50. I should have gone for Superpower here and just gotten rid of it there and then, but I, I over-predicted and I thought the clap was coming up with Superpower. Um, so my, my thought process there was I either superpower and kill it and if he stays in I can U-turn into my Razorade safely and set up my toxic spikes. He does end up finally missing a freaking zap cannon which is uh, cherry on the top for me because uh, that was essentially a free switch in. Uh, Iron Head is doing quite a lot of damage considering the AP investment I have. Um, I've really underestimated uh, Registeel's power. As I'm going to get up a second layer of Toxic Spikes here, Roserade has done its job, it's whittled down the Registeel um, with this next incoming Hidden Power fighting um, to a point where I can come in with either of my offensive uh, pokes and just kill it. So he's going to be brought down to the red here and I'm taken out with an Iron Head so Roserade goes down and obviously he's going to get a turn of lefties back. Um, now I go into Scissor and I think I click Knock Off here. I was calking whether uh, Bullet Punch would have killed, but it was a roll and I really don't want to risk that in case... Because um, I, I didn't want any other damage on this, basically. Um, because Earthquake would have killed uh, from this Crocodile, which he does end up bringing in, and I switch out in fear of Fire Fang. Um, I, I really don't want my scissor to die for the fire fang. So he ends up going for knockoff, which is great for me because Floor just can live that. And he's going to take some rocky helmet damage. And I can freely go for a moonblast. If he stays in here, it dies. Uh, maybe I can take another knockoff because my item has now gone and it will, the power will be halved and yada yada. But he actually goes into Clefable here. And I'm able to get off some decent damage with this incoming moonblast plus toxic. As you can see, Kaboobal's knocked down to the red, and I'm able to take it out with another move last here. I was thinking about synthesis, um, using synthesis, but like in the long run, it just really wasn't worth it, because he could just come in with uh, Victini and kill me with a V3 anyway. Uh, speaking of which, he does decide to go into it. Um, however, at this point, I really don't see like why I'd switch out for differential sake. I need a safe switch into my... So my lassie ass, because I know this isn't choice scuffed. Um, because it did something earlier that made it. So I knew it wasn't choice scuffed. Um, so I have speed with uh, with lassie ass, obviously, um, and connect with the Draco, and that just dies. Victini just drops, and at this point, the game is pretty much in my favour. Um, here he brings in his Megalop. And a combination of uh, Fake Out and Ice Punch will knock me out, and I make the offensive switch into my Scissor, I do believe, on the incoming Fake Out. Um, this was to one, reserve differential, and to just keep on the pressure on him, um, not wanting, you know, to let him claw back any momentum kind of thing. Because um, this thing is a threat, and I really need to play around it. Um, 
but Bullet Punch isn't quite enough to take it out and he's going to get uh, a kill with Dream Punch there. Uh, but the match is now in range where Infinite can come in and take the victory with two Mach Punches. Um, I do live rocks and because my Life Orb was knocked up earlier I will not be going down to said Life Orb recoil, which is really nice. Um, luckily that Lopity didn't have Quick Attack, which uh, could have been problematic. Uh, but in comes the Crocodile, and obviously I'm going to go for the Mach Punch in case this is Choice Guard. And it just lives um, with a sliver of HP, uh, but that's okay because it's going to go down to the Toxic Spikes. Um, Scarf Moxie, Crook, was something I was really concerned about, and I was really really happy that I played around it the way I did. Um, but yeah, that is uh, week three of the GBAD League. Uh, make sure to check out Gearheart down in the description. He did do a live comm of this battle, so if you want to go check that out, I strongly recommend you do so. It's very important to see both sides of the match, and I watched it earlier, and it's like seeing his thought process processes. Um, it's really interesting compared to mine. Uh, but anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. I'm really sorry that this wasn't live comm. It was a long match. Um, and it ended up being like a 40 minute match, I do believe. Um, but I'm gonna go now. Hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, I'll see you in the mod. Peace out.